cholesterol, what's it doing in our body, um, and, and how, is it in, how is it involved in heart disease? Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. That is Dr. George Papanikolaou, a leading expert in functional and integrative medicine. Dr. Papanikolaou brings a wealth of knowledge to the table, focusing on optimizing human health through a holistic approach. In this informative video, Dr. Papanikolaou will dispel common myths about cholesterol and illuminate also connection between cholesterol and inflammation. You'll gain a clear understanding of the different types of cholesterol, their roles in the body, and how inflammation can impact cholesterol levels. Get ready to uncover actionable steps to improve your cholesterol profile and reduce your risk of heart disease. Dr. Papanikolaou will share practical tips and evidence-based strategies for optimizing your cardiovascular health. At the end, we'll give a heart-healthy grocery list and lifestyle tips. Let's listen to the doctor talk more about cholesterol. Well, cholesterol is not water soluble, so it can't move around our body freely. It needs to be carried around. So it's carried around by proteins. They're called lipoproteins. So you've, when you go to the doctor, everybody by now gets their lipid profile done at least once a year, and they hear the terms total cholesterol, they get LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, or HDL is your good cholesterol. Those are lipoproteins. Are there different types of lipoproteins? So there's lipopro the low-density lipoprotein, which is LDL, which is considered a bad protein, a bad lipoprotein. And then there's HDL, which is a high-density lipoprotein, which is considered good. LDL carries cholesterol from your liver to parts of your body where the cholesterol is needed to do its work. HDL, the good cholesterol, carries cholesterol from the periphery of your body and cells that have used it back to the liver for disposal. That's LDL's, that's HDL's job. That's why it's a good cholesterol. It carries cholesterol away once it's been used and gets rid of it. So. So the two lipoproteins work together. Where does the problem arise? And why is LDL the bad guy? And it's quite, and, and honestly, that's not, it's not the bad guy. And we're going to talk about that in a second. The problem with cholesterol is that it has an affinity for inflammation. And if the endothelial lining of the blood vessel wall in any part of your body is inflamed, that creates an opening in that protective lining. The endothelial lining is the, the inner lining of a blood vessel. The blood vessel is like a pipe that's carrying, carrying water in your house. Well, your blood vessel carries blood throughout your body. The critical places those blood vessels have to be the healthiest are in your heart and in your brain. If you have inflammation in the inner lining, it's almost like rust in a pipe. If you have rust on that endothelial lining, that's inflammation. And cholesterol, particularly LDL, has an affinity for that inflammation. And it will attach to the inflamed blood vessel wall. And it will actually enter in underneath that lining and begin to collect. And that's when it becomes a problem. What happens after that? When that happens, the immune system recognizes the cholesterol as a foreigner and creates an inflammatory response. And it, cell, it sends these, these immune cells called macrophages, macrophages to the site and they begin to gobble up the cholesterol. And when they get big enough, they die and they form these things called foam cells. And then these foam cells initiate an even more potent immune response. And that goes on day after day, month after month, year after year. First, it's on a microscopic level, but then as that, that what we call plaque begins to grow, it underneath the endothelial lining, it pushes into the blood vessel wall. And that begins to occlude the blood flow. And when that happens to the blood vessels that feed the heart, then you start to experience what we call ischemic heart disease. Your first symptoms may be chest pain with exercise, chest pain when you're under stress, what we experience is the most devastating outcome of having that plaque forming is when it gets big enough that it cracks 
And when it cracks, it causes a blood clot. And that blood clot will fill up the remaining space in the blood vessel. And that is a heart attack. And those can be lethal. And if they're not, they can create a great deal of disability for patients. That doesn't sound good. That's why cholesterol has gotten the bad rap because it's the, the last bank robber running from the bank. And that's the one that got seen. But that's not the problem. The problem is what happened first, and that's the inflammation. So what causes inflammation? Lots of things. We're gonna go back to lifestyle. And one of the most important things that causes inflammation are carbohydrates, particularly refined carbohydrates and sugars. And in the last 50 years, when we were living under the dogma of cholesterol is bad, our food industry started making low-fat foods. And to make low-fat foods tasty, you needed to add sugar, you needed to add salt, and you also needed to add fat. And the fat that was being used, which was thought to be safe, were vegetable fats, but they were highly processed. And when you highly process vegetable fats, they become inflammatory. So now you have sugar, you have inflammatory oils that are now coursing through our bloodstream, creating inflammation. That's the critical piece. So today's eating lifestyle ultimately is responsible for these problems. So there are several markers of inflammation that we look at. One's called a CRP, one calls a homocysteine. And I say, I certainly can't make a decision or help you make a decision about whether you should come off your statin or take a statin unless I know how much inflammation you have in your body. So that will be two tests that I will get if they are not part of their profile. Then I will perform something called a nuclear magnetic resonance lipid profile. That is when we are able to look at the actual molecular structure of the lipoproteins that go through your bloodstream and determine which ones you have. And when we do that, we're able to find other lipoproteins and they've been researched and they've been found to actually be more important marker, markers of heart disease or risk for heart disease than LDL, total cholesterol, and low HDL. Tell us more about these markers for risk of heart disease. One of them is called your low density lipoprotein particle number. And one's called your low density lipoprotein size. The low density lipoprotein particle number is really a measurement of how many LDLs you actually have. Not just the total, but how many individual LDL molecules do you have? The LDL size is how big are those LDLs? So it's not just a total LDL, now we're getting more granular. How many of them do you have and how big are they? And what we found is, is that the really small, dense LDLs, they're like missiles. They can penetrate into endothelial lining where there's inflammation and build up very quickly. So you want larger LDL molecules because the big fluffy ones put you at lower risk for heart disease. And if you have big fluffy LDLs, that's going to be a favorable uh, measurement and is going to be one step towards, hmm, your LDL it may be high, but it's they're big and fluffy and you have lots of them because and you have few of them. You want low, you want a low LDL particle number. The fewer particles you have and the bigger they are, the lower risk you are. So if you have that profile, that's like one reason why you might not need to be on a statin because it doesn't matter if the LDL is high. You have small ones and you have fewer of them. You have big ones and you have fewer of them. Are there any other markers? Then there's another marker. It's HDL size. You want your HDLs to be big. So even if you have a, a mildly low or low HDL, if we look at the size and they're big, that's really good. Because HDLs are like, we know what they do. They collect cholesterol and they take it to the liver for it to be disposed of. If you have small HDLs, then that's like having small dump trucks and they can't really pack on a lot of cholesterol. And they're not very efficient at collecting it 
and driving it to the liver and getting rid of it. But if you got really big dump trucks, really big HDLs, they can collect more cholesterol, carry it to the liver and have it removed. So your HDL size is also important. Any other interesting markers? And finally, there's a really interesting marker that's gaining a lot of, a lot of um, ground as being an important marker for heart disease. And it's called lipoprotein A, or LP little a. So LP little a is very much genetically programmed. So 90% of the people that have this LP little a, they have a gene for it. And there's some thought that this may have conferred for that population of people a, a lower risk of dying from injury because it helps blood clot. So evolutionarily, it may have had a value at some point. But now, because of the diets that we, we have and a lifestyle we have, that what used to be an evolutionary advantage may now be a disadvantage when it comes to heart disease. So LP little a actually expresses itself very quickly. So by the time you're two years old, it's fully expressed and you're making a lot of LPA, LP little a. By the time you're five, you're making a lot of this lipoprotein A. And what it basically is, is it's an LDL with an additional lipoprotein called um, APOA. It's fully expressed by age five to your adult level. So you're living with this really high LP little a if you're inclined to do that genetically for most of your lifetime. Knowing that value, what we understand about that is that it increases your risk for heart disease fourfold, but nobody screens for it. And so I will screen for an LP little a, because if that is you know really high number, even if everything else being equal, you're sort of on the borderline with your numbers, um, uh, a high L LP little a is gonna really concern me and I'm going to really wanna work at changing your lifestyle and using that as leverage to have you do it. Anything more about cholesterol? So what I've just talked about are different ways of looking at cholesterol. And I, I told you it's inflammation, but I just got done telling you that there are important cholesterol markers that we need to look at that increase your risk for heart disease. It's both. Inflammation is the, is the genesis and cause of heart disease in that it creates an environment for cholesterol to create those plaques, that to create those blockages, that create the diseases and the, the, that cause heart attacks and strokes. What do we need to be aware of as far as our cholesterol is concerned? So when it comes down to it, we need to be aware of those things that will, in our life, that will create inflammation. And we also need to be aware that our doctors need to measure it appropriately. So when you come to me as a functional medicine doctor, I'm going to look at not just your total cholesterol and your LDL and your HDL, but the markers that identify risk more sensitively, as I've explained, those are LDL particle number, LDL particle size, LPL little a, as your cholesterol markers. On the other side, and more importantly, is do you have inflammation going on in your body right now? And two of the really important markers that need to be included in your, in your cardiovascular risk assessment when we're looking at our physiologic markers are CRP and homocysteine, because both of those are linked to increased risk for heart disease because they are markers for inflammation. As promised, here are some natural ways through dietary and lifestyle changes to help lower CRP and homocysteine levels, which may contribute to a reduced risk of heart disease. First, the dietary changes only by single ingredient foods. This includes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, spices, and legumes. These foods are packed with antioxidants and fiber, which can help combat inflammation. Include healthy fats from sources like avocados, nuts, seeds, and extra virgin olive oil. These fats can help reduce inflammation and improve heart health. Opt for lean protein sources like fish, poultry, beans, and lentils. 
Do not buy processed foods that are unhealthy fats, added sugars, and refined carbohydrates, which can promote inflammation. No ultra-processed meat or poultry. Tip, read the labels. There should only be one ingredient. Next, incorporate lifestyle changes. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise most days of the week. Exercise helps reduce inflammation and improve cardiovascular health. Something is better than nothing. Slowly make it a part of your daily habit. Obesity is a risk factor for chronic inflammation and heart disease. Losing weight, even a moderate amount, can significantly improve your health. Chronic stress can contribute to inflammation. Explore stress management techniques like yoga, meditation, or deep breathing exercises. Aim for seven to eight hours of quality sleep each night. Poor sleep can disrupt hormones and contribute to inflammation. Smoking is a major risk factor for heart disease and inflammation. Quitting smoking is one of the best things you can do for your health. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.